Hey guys, how's everything going? Um, this video is gonna be a quick uh, recap of some fur price averages. I recently got my check from Fur Harvesters. Um, this is my first year shipping fur to them. Actually shipping forever, but I recently got my check actually yesterday or the day before, and I just kinda wanna go through some fur price you know, averages as well as you know the prices that I got for my fur, and we'll go through the individual sales that I made. Um, it's nothing crazy, but I did want to cover that, and hopefully you guys might learn something in this video. But yeah, I don't know, just a couple little updates. I haven't really been uh, posting as much as I'd like on my channel recently. Uh, my family and I are kind of uh, trying to paint our house, and and also I wanted to say a huge thank you for all my subscribers. Uh, we recently hit, you know, we we we're over our 300 now, so that's great. Um, hopefully we can get to 350 here real soon, and hopefully a thousand here soon as well. That'd be great. So like I said, this is my first year shipping fur, my first year selling fur. It's really actually my first trapping season. Now before you click off the video thinking that uh, this kid doesn't know anything, um, you know, I might not know a bunch, but I think I know a little bit, you know, to kind of give the idea and maybe, you know, teach you guys something if you're kind of new to this game as well. Um, but I'm also going to be talking about some opinions and, you know, thoughts that I got from other more experienced trappers. All right, so first off, um, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this like a couple minutes ago, but I did ship to Fur Harvester's auction house. They are located in North Bay, Ontario, and you know, it's an auction house. So these sales here that I'm about to show you are for the April auction, the sale results from April 17th to the 20th. I dropped off my fur in February, and the trucks brought it to North Bay, and the sale was held in April. And uh, Mark Dowie has written a really nice uh, letter here. I'll, I'll, prob I'll try to link this in the description below you, for you so you can read it for yourself. I'm not really going to go into that, but basically with this whole coronavirus, they've, uh, you know, a lot of buyers weren't able to come into the country to buy fur there, you know, be able to see the fur. They weren't really able to do that. Um, hopefully that will change here shortly. But what Fur Harvesters has done, they tried to still make the best of it, and what they did is uh, had like an online auction type of thing. I believe they've had, uh, they said they just completed their third auction using this system, so they're still able to sell, I think, quite a decent bit of fur with these online auctions but for the April 17th to the 20th the sale results for that um, I'm gonna th I'm gonna go through the species here and we're gonna talk about them a little bit so beaver um, there was over 75,000 offered 55% of them sold and the average was $17 on beaver now these prices are in Canada I'm gonna put the US price right up here so you don't have to worry about converting that yourself so like I said the average was $17 dollars and three cents for beaver and the top was a hundred and three dollars and twenty cents for beaver so that's actually not too bad I don't think honestly what's pretty crazy is caster was up quite a bit and it was selling for actually quite a bit of money um, the West select sold for hundred and forty four dollars a pound grade one was sold for hundred and thirty two dollars a pound grade two caster was sold for hundred twenty dollars a pound and grade three caster was sold for hundred and eight dollars a pound so that is quite a bit of money for caster and honestly I think a lot of guys are trapping caster instead of beaver but as you can see you know there's quite a few beaver pelts offered so they did so they did put them up which is great not wasting anything but uh yeah caster was pretty hot this year now mink um actually sold decently um there was over 11,000 offered and 78% of that 11,000 sold the average was 688 for the mink and the top was $12. Martin or Sable, uh, over 23,000 were offered and 94% of those sold. 3X to 2X heavies sold for an average of $71 and 26 cents. I'm not gonna bother mentioning the cents anymore. And the 1X heavies sold for $59 average. The large heavies sold for $42 average. 3X to 2X semis, semis sold for 66 dollar average uh, 1x semi sold for $55 average and large semi sold for $40 average and the top Martin sold for $79 for otter about eight and a half thousand of those were offered 60% sold the average being $19 and the top being 73 the Fisher over 13,000 were offered and only 51% sold for those uh, but the average was $19 uh, with the top Fisher selling for 33 so for links 7,600 around 7,600 links were offered and for the Canadians for the Canadian links 99% sold for an average of $112 and for a top being 182 and then the Western uh, links a 25% of the Western links sold average on the Westerns were actually $237 with top being $600 so I'm not too into cats so I don't really know an insane amount about 
you know if those are decent averages or not but i'm assuming they're still down from what a lot of people would like a lot of people would like everybody would like to see extremely high price fur but anyway uh central lynx cats were 95 percent of the central lynx cats sold and with an average of 134 dollars and top being 189 dollars so the muskrats did really well actually i think anyway uh over 81,000 were offered, 98% sold. So m like most of the muskrats sold, and I know all my muskrats sold, which we'll get into here in a minute. The average was $6.14, and the top muskrat sold for $10.68. So nothing insane, but um, you know, all of them, you know, the majority of them sold. So, you know, you definitely could sell them. It's not like with some things where you don't know if you're gonna sell them or not really. I mean, you never know exactly what's gonna sell, but the majority of the muskrats sold. Over 23,000 fox were offered and northern averages were $20 with a top northern going at $33.60. And then the average for eastern fox were $14.56 with a top at $33.60. And then, you know, cross foxes, gray foxes, white foxes, silver fox. Um, if you're really interested in those, I'm gonna link uh, this page in the description so you can read that for yourself. Now for coyotes, which is something that a lot of people trap for, because you know generally speaking they're worth quite a bit canada goose was a big player in leading the coyote market because they use their coyotes you know they they use them for their trim on their their coats so but for coyotes you know uh over 31,000 were offered 95 percent of the western sold 89 percent of the eastern sold and 53 percent of the central sold and for westerns the average was 118 dollars for western so that's not insane and the uh average for eastern coyotes was 54 dollars which is about what i saw for my coyotes because uh, we have Eastern Coyotes. Um, and for Central Coyotes, 1480 was the average. And Raccoon didn't do so great, which a lot of people expected, but like you'll see here in a minute, I actually didn't do too bad with my raccoons. Over 100,000 raccoons were offered and 13% of those sold with an average of $10 and with a top raccoon selling for $28. So that's not great. But I actually got, I'll show you here in a minute, but I actually did decent on raccoons. Ermine, so weasel, over 19,000 weasel were offered with a 50% sale. So 50% of those weasels sold and for an average of $3.43 and for a uh, top weasel selling for $9.72. So squirrels, over 3,000 were offered and 100% of the squirrels sold. So that's actually kind of interesting. And they sold for a $2 average and a top of, four, of $5. Skunk did pretty good actually with uh, over 600 of those offered. So 600, over 600, that's actually not that much at all. Um, but 100% of skunks sold and with an average of $6.53 um, and the top skunk bringing $32. My papers are flying away in the wind. Hold on. Badger, over 400 badgers were offered, mainly unsold, so badgers, yeah, the mainly most of them didn't sell at all. Possum, around 3,600 were offered and mainly on sold as well. So Wolverine, 96 were offered and 93% of those sold um, with an average on the Wolverine was $364 with a top bringing $666. Timberwolf, over 500 were offered for the Arctic Timberwolves, 55% sold with a $332 average and with a top bringing $786. And then for the Eastern Timberwolf, 95% of those sold with a $86 average and the top wolf bringing $183. Now with the Black Timberwolves, 96% sold with an average of over $400 and a top bringing over $1,000. And then for the last year, we have Black Bear, almost 300 were offered and 75% uh, of them sold with an average of $136 and tops bringing $528. Now that was a lot of talking. All right, so now I'm gonna get into what I sold. Um, I didn't sell an insane amount of fur. I actually sold very little compared to quite a few people. Um, the reason being is because, you know, this is my first season, so I didn't actually offer or, you know, I didn't actually ship that much fur. So in the April auction, I had two beavers there and one sold for $24. That was a large beaver and it was a select heavy. So I don't I don't think I did too bad on that one. And the other one that I had was a small and it didn't sell. Not super surprised about that. But, and then for my muskrats, all my muskrats sold. I had 16 muskrats in this auction and they all sold. So, and my average was $5.89. Yeah, I almost made $100 in muskrats, which is not too bad. And my top muskrat actually brought $6.60. So that's not bad at all. Now with raccoon, this is kind of interesting for me. Uh, I, I was told that, you know, raccoon, wasn't gonna do very well and as you can see with the averages and you know what I just you know mentioned they didn't do good right um, only 13% sold 
but for me, I actually did pretty good on my raccoons. So I had a 3X select coon go for 1440 so that's not too bad at all then i had a 5x to 4x coon that wasn't sold it, it you know it's going to be re-offered and then i had a 1x to large coon and it sold for two dollars and 40 cents so that's not that's not very great but then i had this is my top coon that i'm about to mention i had a 3x select go for 17 dollars and 40 cents so that's actually not too bad at all i don't think considering you know the market and the way it is I don't think I did too bad on that one. And then I had, a, you know, 4X or 3X select, and it was a damaged coon. Uh, it didn't sell. And then I had a 4X or 3X regular select that sold for $1.20, so not super good. And then I had one uh, weasel in there, and it was a 1X to large, and it sold for $2.10. Uh, yeah, so whatever. I had two coyotes. They were both... They were both 3x to 2x coyotes and they were both semi and they both sold for $55.20 so I made over $100 on coyotes. Yeah, that's that's it for what I sold, that's it for the averages. But really quick before I end the video, I want to touch on kind of what my thoughts are on the fur market going forward. So what I think needs to happen for the fur market to pick up, and I actually didn't do too bad considering what was going on, what's been going on in the world lately, but basically what needs to happen is, uh, you know, the borders have to open up between countries for, you know, buyers to be able to come through and to buy fur. And I'm not going to go too deep into all this, you know, political stuff or whatever, but yeah, that's what needs to happen is, you know, for the fur market to pick up is we need buyers to actually be able to come into Canada to buy fur at North Bay, which I'm sure here in the future will happen, hopefully shortly. Um, now, the, the next auction is in July. Hopefully, the July auction should be about the same what we got from the April auction. But what I'm really looking forward to and really interested in, and I'm sure a lot of people are, is the auction next spring. Um, so, we'll see how that goes. But, uh, you know, I think... I'm kind of, you know, I'm optimistic. So, you know, like I said, you know, it, everything needs to open up for buyers to be able to come into here. But I think, you know, with the way things are going, that might be happening here, uh, hopefully soon. Um, and yeah, so, you know, I'm hopeful about next spring's auction. You know, hopefully next spring, we'll be seeing some, you know, good fur prices and, uh, yeah, but I just want to mention really quick, one of my sponsors, Long Creek Trapping Supplies, you can, you can go find their link in the description, but, uh, he was, you know, I was, I talk to him on the phone every once in a while and, you know, he was, he's thinking that, you know, we just need to tell that, like, he's basically saying what I'm saying is, he basically said once buyers are able to get in, he thinks the fur market's going to, you know, pick up uh, quite a bit. At least that's what he said the last times I talked to him, but, uh, and I think that's what a lot of people are going to say is we just need buyers to be able to come to the country and, you know, the fur market should pick back up. Hopefully buyers are able to come into Canada soon and we're able to get some, you know, better prices because they'll be able to actually see the fur, you know, buyers like to be able to see the fur. Um, before they buy it. I think Fur Harvesters has done a really great job considering everything going on. I was actually, you know, I was very pleased with what I saw. If you enjoyed this video at all or got anything from it or enjoyed listening to me blabber on for almost 30 minutes here, then uh, yeah, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the like button. It really does help, help out the channel. And uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll talk to you in the next one.